Welcome Abhinav. Uh, uh, for the people who don't know Abhinav, uh, let me introduce him. He is the CA analyst at Rigo Moon. He has more than five years of experience working in the industry and he is working in everything related to computer and engineering. So an expertise whether we want to make a career in CA, whether we want to know about technologies related to CA, simulations, design, the whole ecosystem, and what are the things required from career scope to entrepreneurship, what is the industry ecosystem? Everything is an expert. Uh, Abhinav is an expert on each and everything. So let's hear Abhinav. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, your journey uh, and about yourself? Uh, yes, sure. So uh, I passed out in 2016 in yeah. engineering and I did mechanical engineering from my hometown only. That is uh, KBB College of Engineering. Uh, okay. It's situated in Satara. And after completing engineering, I took a gap of one year. I was preparing for gate exams. So after <clears throat> doing that, I couldn't score well. I qualified the gate exam, but I couldn't score well enough to get a good college. So I decided to opt for CAE uh, engineering. So initially I contacted with my some of my friends who were already working in the field. So they told me do this and this. So I did some courses and with my prerequisite, I got a got an internship opportunity initially in a small company. So after completing that internship, in that internship period, I did small projects. And after that, I went to uh, Elino in Energy LNP. Uh, there I spent two years <clears throat> as a CAE analyst. There I worked on various domains like defense, railways, uh, automotive systems, mainly in crash safety. So after that, the pandemic came and during pandemic, uh, there were layoffs going on and I was looking for a good opportunity which can provide good salary. So that in that period, I didn't want it, wanted to take a gap. So I switched to John Deere uh, company, but the role wasn't for CAE engineer. It was for technical authoring. So one year I spent there and when I came to that, that came to know that marketing market is opening up for CAE opportunities again. I switched to CAE again uh, to Rio mode. So now at Rio mode, I'm working on mostly automotive domain in uh, uh, IP seating system, etc. That's great. So your journey has been uh, a little bit more into the CA. And can you tell me, India is an exam oriented country. Okay? From J exam to gate exam, everyone uh, gets into the exam, or PSE exam, very much exam oriented country. A lot of people prepare for exams to get into the jobs or to get okay. into the public, right? But skill oriented is very less people are skill oriented. At least in colleges, uh, they are very less skill oriented. So, okay. as you mentioned, Abna, that you prepare, you took a break of one year and then prepared for a gate exam, right? So, yes, right. in 2016, and after that, uh, what happened generally is uh, suppose you didn't qualify the gate or didn't want a good rank in that, you hmm. switched to a skill because at the end, you know, if you got into the MTA policy, then also you will have to learn this skill. That's the gap yes. the MTech students and BTech students are having. Well, okay. uh, when, they're, when they're going into the MTech, many, I'm an aerospace engineer, when my friends went into the MTech, then what happened that they were expected that they should know the MATLAB, at least MATLAB. They should know okay. that to write the codes, to do the programming. They should know yeah. a little bit about CATIA, you know, ANSYS, all those sort of things. But people didn't have the exposure, right? Because they didn't right. have the motivation. So you didn't have the motivation that why should I work on that is the motivation will be to get a certificate just to show in the CV, but not to learn actually. There's no motivation in the college just to learn or to work on a project or what can be the future of this, you know, uh, uh, what can be the five year or ten year, where can I be, uh, what can be the career exposure in this particular field. That's the that's the lack. That's why we are doing a lot of sessions to okay. the students and professionals that <laughs> what are the opportunities, right? And uh, how to be on the track? Like many people, you know, as soon as AI and ML are going on, many people who have learned ANSYS, they are saying that they want to make a career in data science or, you know, in machine learning. Okay. But they are not very much proficient in writing a code from scratch, writing a solver from scratch, right? Or they okay. cannot have the problem solving the skill, but they are into more and more like the uh, jack of all, but master of none. Mm. Right? Okay. These kind of people are not on there, and due to the trend, they are shifting towards it. So that's why mm -hmm. I wanted to have a chat with you and uh, to our audience as well. That as an industry person, you are working in the heavy industry, a core industry into mechanical mm -hmm. engineering, and uh, the shift of mechanical engineering is going very down. 
let me tell you very frankly, most of the yes. villages in the north have uh, stopped in in mechanical engineering because people are not opting them. Right? Yes, so correct. They are thinking, they are thinking that, uh, you know, after mechanical engineering, there is no job. Mm -hmm. And if there is a job, they are just going to shift into the IT industry. And the IT industry is already full of computer science engineers. Right? If every engineer will be just going out of the box and getting into the IT sector, there will be more supply less demand. And the supply of, you know, uh, less efficient people, supply of only the uh, jack people, not the master people. So that okay. is the problem for the industry also. Right? How many mm -hmm. people will be hired? So yes. that's why. And in the heavy industry, in the core industry, no one is talking about CNCs, no one is talking about operation research or the production engineering, power plant engineering, whether they don't know the basics. Most of the people in ISRO, I have talked about, ISRO takes an interview question, and in the interview question, they generally ask, what comes first, stress or strain? And many people mm -hmm. from good colleges even don't have the answer to that. Like, that's the basic level of problem going on in the mechanic. Uh, so, as an industry person, how do you see this thing? Like, what's your experience behind this? Uh, yes, I have even I have experienced such uh, scenarios in our company or in my previous companies as well. I came across people who had good software knowledge, who had good tool knowledge, but uh, they lacked with the basic fundamentals, which are required in problem solving. Because I'm typically talking about uh, CAE field. CAE uh, is all about physics means it revolves around physics and it is about problem solving it is computer aided engineering so it is a must to uh, grasp all the basics you should be proficient with the basics so yes uh, i will be talking in brief about it when ah. we start uh, once uh, i sh start sharing the ppt and all yes definitely so yes uh, it's over to you Abhinav. you can start sharing the ppt uh, our okay. one poll result has came out of the 15, I think 11 people are into the CA, CA engineer. And uh, one more thing, I'm again going for the poll that how many of them are, you know, uh, as a starter, are they students or are they, you know, a senior level professional or mid level professional, and how many experience are there? So I will be running that poll, but in, the, in that meantime, you can start. I can, I'm making you a presenter and uh, you can start your PPT and show the students your insights, what you have learned, and uh, okay. how you can uh, tell the people what can be the career scope and what can be the point of use. Yeah. Uh, yes, you. sure, sure, sure. Uh, is my screen visible to all of yes, you? Yes, yes, very much visible. Please, guys, raise your hands if you can see the screen of uh, Abhinav. Raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Yes, definitely see. Many people are raising their hands. That's okay. great. That's great. So uh, before we begin, the main topic of today's session is effective strategies to build a career in computer aided engineering or CAE. So uh, imagine you have just passed out from college, from graduation, and you are now looking for a job. You decide to look for a job. So you don't randomly uh, choose any company and right away start applying resumes in that company. You first need to understand the market scenario. Uh, if your skill sets that you learned in your engineering, do they align with the market requirements or the industry requirements? So for that case, you first need to understand the industry ecosystem, how it is structured. So first I will take you through uh, industry ecosystem. Uh, here you can see this uh, infographic. So I will uh, typically take here example of automotive industry because it is a globalized industry and many people are aware about it. So the automotive industry uh, primarily revolves around uh, three primary uh, layers of suppliers that is oem or original equipment manufacturers tier one and tier two again there is third level which we can call service providers or tier three companies now let me explain you uh, each and everything in detail so if you are wondering why i'm starting with this uh, you will understand it in later slides when we start to uh, with our strategies later so you will get to you will uh, get the link why i am explaining this to you this will help us understand the market scenario so uh, no oem uh, let me first tell you oem or original equipment manufacturers they uh, manufacture a product inside or they assemble the product inside their facility and they launch it or they sell sell it so no oem in the world no any oem manufactures the whole product or a, say for example whole car in their facility 
they will outsource some of the sub sub components to tier one or tier two suppliers. Uh, say, for example, uh, one there is one OEM called Ford. So Ford will uh, initially design and manufacture some core uh, component in vehicle like engine assembly or powertrain and they will outsource other remaining parts from tier one and tier two like uh, door trims uh, bumper wheels or dashboard of the car so they will outsource these parts so why do they outsource that point i will come later but uh, so tier one uh, again uh, when they manufacture a door trim uh, we will take an example of door trim uh, so when they manufacture a door trim they will again outsource uh, some of the parts like door seal or glass shield from tier 2 suppliers and uh, recent years means in some few years ago uh, oems and tier 1 companies they used to outsource only essential tasks like uh, logistics planning manpower or management but uh, very recently oems have even started outsourcing design services even r and d and engineering services so again tier 1 company when they when they are manufacturing their door they need to know if their door will withstand uh, so and so amount of loads whether it will perform well in the physical test so for that purpose they need to validate their design so again they will outsource their design or ca services to tier 2 companies or service provider companies so here tier 2 uh, and service provider as you can see they have a good opportunity to provide their expertise provide their support engineering support to tier 1 and oem companies so now that we have i hope you have understood this three this pyramid about how uh, the industry operates from supplier point of view so i would like to ask you if anyone in the session any guesses that uh, do you have any idea why do companies outsource why oems or tier ones outsource their services why don't they do it in house any guesses Guys, be interactive. Open your video and answer the questions of Abhinav. It will be more engaging and interactive so that you can learn more. Hello, uh, I'm Narayan. I'm audible. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So the reason why the companies are outsourcing from tier one is like they can save uh, more time than in the R and D itself. Like for example, for a uh, considering manufacturing all the components. Stuff they will focus on any particular thing which related to the company specific. Other things mm -hmm. they may outsource from uh, OEMs. Sorry, like tire one companies. Even though from their outsourcing, they will do some specific R and D or they have some specific request to that OEM tire one company. So based on their request, the tire one company will provide. So it basically saves the cost of the R and D, also the time consuming also. Uh, yes, correct. You have answered it correct. So there are basically three major reasons why companies are outsourcing. So the first is it provides access to a global talent pool. Say, for example, a businessman in India wants to uh, set up his plant about on uh, EV manufacturing, EV electric vehicles. So he will all set up and plant and all, but he lacks the expertise or the manpower expertise in assembly line. So he will search all over the world with his contacts or any connections. And he comes to know that good labor is available in Dubai. So he will outsource that as a service to uh, Dubai laborers who are uh, good in assembly line production. So uh, that's how he will do. And similarly, not only labor, uh, uh, provide global talent pool, uh, pool means say uh, some countries are good at providing CA analysis services. Some are expert in NVS services. So companies can outsource their services directly to them. So why do I do this? Because it is cost effective as Naren told it. So uh, the businessman in India, he cannot hire them, hire the Dubai workers for a full as a full time employee because it will not be profitable for him. What will be profitable is to outsource that services so that he can save a lot of cost. The third major reason is it helps them focus on core competencies. Now here I will take example of Tesla Motors, Tesla company. Their main product is uh, electric vehicles so say for instance they came across a technology uh, which can reduce their fuel consumption or uh, electric power consumption by 50 percent so they need to implement this technology in all all their vehicles and launch them so they will what they will do they will uh, move that their existing manpower to 
they will shift their existing power to developing this technology and implementing it in their vehicles so that manpower which was initially working on routing tasks those routing tasks will be outsourced to tier 1 tier 2 or uh, even uh, service provider companies so it helps them focus on core competencies that's the point the fourth major benefit they get is speed and scalability if a uh, customers of some company here tata group the customers started demanding more and more cars they means the demand grew in the market for tata motor cars so the tata motors need to produce their vehicles in bulk so outsourcing some of the non essential services allows them to produce in bulk and even scale their company so these are the four major reasons i hope you have understood all of them naren actually uh, clarified it most of the points from this so now we will go to basic framework for freshers so uh, in the first slide as we saw the tier 3 and service provider they have a good opportunity or good chance to uh, provide their expertise or give their support to oems and tier 1 companies or oems can outsource their manpower from service providing companies or even they can outsource their services like ca analysis so when a fresher is uh, passed out from as a graduate he can target these companies that is service provider companies because there is a lot of exposure uh, from automotive domain uh, they, he can get a chance to work on nvh either crash and safety analysis durability analysis whatever analysis occurs in automotive domain so he has a good chance so what strategy he can implement here is he can uh, make a list of all the service provider companies in his hometown maybe say he want to work in a company which is close to his home so he can list out all those service provider companies after that he can start connecting with professionals who are working in that industries through linkedin or some uh, web through website links etc so once he starts uh, interacting with them he will get to know or he can basically increase his chances or increase his chances of getting a job in those companies or he can continuously follow take a follow up with the, those people for any relevant opportunities so that's why i had explained this tree to you so this is the basic framework for freshers which i'm currently seeing right now in the market around me and what my friends are doing what currently pass, passing out engineers they can appro uh, approach with this framework that is first is approach service provider companies then gain experience and knowledge that is work for say one or two years until they gain some experience in a particular domain in that industry service provider industry and once they get the uh, experience they can transition to tier 1 or oem companies uh, it is a very exceptional case if you are passed out from iit or nit or some well reputed college then actually you can get an opportunity to directly work in oems or tier 1 companies because such companies they recruit from campus interviews from uh, such nits and iits so but it is an exceptional case uh, if you, even if you are not an iitian you can follow this path that is uh, service provider companies uh, work there for one or two years and transition to tier 1 or oems uh, while working in service provider provider companies many of them even send their employees on site to uh, mncs or oems so in that way they have also good opportunity of getting an exposure or of what is happening in the oem how the workflow happens how the process takes place how to interact with customers and all etc so if he gains that exposure for say one or two years it will be much beneficial and again he will increase his chances of uh, working for an oem because OEM will prefer such people who already have such experience. So I hope you, if there are any freshers, I know there are also. This is a mixed kind of audience. There are also experienced people who already know this path, and there are also fresher people, fresher mechanical engineers. So I suggest them to take notes because it will be easy for you to refer afterwards. Okay. So we shall move to next slide. So. Uh, these are some domains in ca that if you are interested you can gain expertise and start building your career in those domains uh, like durability crash and safety nvh cfd thermal engineering optimization mbd or multi body dynamics uh, so these are all applicable to all domains means durability or uh, nvh that is noise vibration and harshness or crash and safety these are all applicable for automotive industry as well for consumer goods for defense domain etc 
so these are the domains which you can choose as uh, to focus on and to start building your career uh, now we come to the main part that is steps to become a cae engineer or the exact path how to proceed many people have asked me on linkedin as well so your here, here let me take you through it quickly uh, the first step is gain a fundamental understanding of engineering subjects now i have uh, dedicated a separate slide for this step all other steps are like in chronological order which i will be explaining but this step one deserves a sep separate slide because as even we discussed previously with uh, sandeep also that how basics are important in problem solving so a sound understanding of basics can help you solve 90 percent or more than 90 percent of the problem in ca because all the remaining 10 percent is all like tinkering with the tools interpreting the results etc and from a mechanical mechanical engineering point of view you should be familiar or proficient with these topics which i have mentioned here it is app make numerical methods solid mechanics metallurgy machine design fluid mechanics and even uh, vibration basics that is what is natural frequency what is resonance etc so if you are a civil engineer and you want to make a career in ca then these topics will be totally different maybe some might be common as well so this is the first step to gain a fundamental understanding without this step without this crucial step never uh, proceed to next step that is which i will take now uh, learn ca software but first choose a domain once you are familiar once you are proficient with uh, basic fundamentals then you can start with CA software, but again, uh, you cannot learn all the softwares. There are many CA softwares existing today on CA in the world. You cannot uh, say like you cannot choose any random software and become master at it because each and every software has a different purpose. That purpose will be defined by your domain of interest. Uh, say, for example, I am interested in crash and safety domain, so or sitting domain or sitting product as a product i am interested in sitting analysis so i will first master the fundamentals which are required in sitting or crash and safety like conservation of momentum concepts of statics and dynamics uh, stress strain curve uh, theories of failure uh, likewise i will first master those concepts after that i will see which are the relevant softwares uh, relevant to that domain like crash and safety which will be like pam crash ls dyna hypermesh so i will start learning uh, hypermesh and ls dyna right away once i choose a domain and i am good at the basics okay so then comes the third step that is practice with sample program uh, problems so there are websites like alter ansys uh, simscale and simulia where they have provided tutorials and basic case studies for some sample problems so you can refer those case studies refer that material and do your own small mini projects so that you get an idea about how the solver works what is the work of the pre processor how to interpret results etc so you get a basic idea by practicing uh, these problems and again this reminds me of one more thing i forgot to mention while you are uh, doing step one that is you are mastering your basics after mastering them even try to solve some problems because even if you are 10 years experienced person in ci even if you are 20 years person experience in ci you still require to do hand calculations there are many ca engineers in this session you can even ask them if this is true that you need to do hand calculations to verify the results and uh, like drawing a free body diagram so that you get to know where the boundary conditions are applied and stuff like that so that practicing is also important and this practicing that is after once you learn the software once you are good with the basics it's time to apply that knowledge by practicing with sample problems now the step four is gaining industrial exposure so many times what happens uh, when we do when we are aware about what we can do with so and so software we start doing analysis and we start to enjoying that stuff so that and we enjoy it so much we start immersing ourselves in that uh, learning process and even do projects which are not may not be required in the industry so it is important to know what's going on in the outer world what's going on in the industry that you can know by attending seminars workshops uh, webinars or conferences by industry professionals uh, there are many conferences like alter conference or dyna conference which occur every four times in a year 
so you should stay updated on when the next conference will be go and attend that event uh, take down notes of various uh, speeches from industry professionals try to meet them and gain an idea about what's going on in the industry what are the latest developments and which what things are already outdated so that will give you a good idea then the next step will be join professional organizations or communities uh, in our daily life we have joined lots of groups say for example i am interested in football or i am interested in crash analysis so i will join those groups on whatsapp it, they are like basic communities where i can interact with like minded people who are also interested in football so that we can plan things like when should be when should we play the next match when should we plan the next tournament or uh, if i came across any error i can post it in that group whatsapp group so these are nothing but communities so similarly there are professional or uh, professional organizations or communities which are made only for engineers it is like a uh, sae is one community that is society of automotive engineers then there will be msme asme society for mechanical engineers likewise you can search them on google and start joining those organizations uh, attending their events connecting with those people then the next step that is sixth step is gain gain practical experience by working on projects so this is the step which is uh, has a lot of importance in CAE domain because even if you practice all this even from step 1 to 5 you are expert in all these steps you have gained everything learned everything but still you have not got that industrial exposure you have not worked on some real world project then this knowledge means nothing so it is important to do some internships see, seek out opportunities in the market uh, connect with people through these organization or communities and ask them directly if you have any relevant uh, internship opportunities grab that opportunity do an internship for say three to four months uh, during that internship learn whatever you can because i also went through same phase me and lots of my friends who recommended me that path i went through internships i got some basic knowledge i worked on real world projects because what happens when you work on a real world project you come to understand customer's point of view what he expects from us from our project and you also get to learn some soft skills like how to interact with customers that will just add as a value it will be adding value to your portfolio now the next step that is step seven is uh, pivotal it, this step can be pivotal in your career that is network with the right people uh, if you have right people around you if you are in environment with the right people then you will get opportunities uh, <clears throat> means you are likely to get more opportunities uh, we have various platforms like Instagram, WhatsApp, LinkedIn. So you can utilize those uh, platforms and start connecting with people in the industry. You can search for who all are CA engineers in my field, who all are working in the crash and safety domain. Start connecting with them and along with that also start connecting with HRs or human resource people on LinkedIn belonging to that company. So that whenever they will post any uh, relevant requirements or openings in their company, you will come to know and you can apply it right away and eighth step that is keep learning and upgrade consistently so it will never happen that you will master all the softwares existing in ca and you will learn everything every domain knowledge you will have it will never happen because ca is a vast field and it is impossible to master every field and it is a continuously evolving domain so you also need to continuously upgrade yourself uh, stay in touch with what are the latest technologies that are coming align your skill set with those in the market so that you and your skills never go outdated and while following all these eight steps make sure you are always in touch with the basics that is the first step that i mentioned earlier uh, it happens that when we uh, start learning some things and we go further we tend to forget what we learned earlier but in this case you even if you are doing any projects even after if, if you spend 10 years in ca you will still still need to stay in touch with the basics i hope this clarifies to everyone i hope this helps everyone and another thing i would like to mention here is it's joining coaching institute worth it so yes if you join a coaching institute this all these steps you will have to follow but it will speed up your process because you will come in contact with a uh, lot of prof other professionals who are working in that field who are senior personnel who can guide you well and uh, there is a good learning environment in coaching institutes and 
even you get a mentor who can guide you and he knows where you are going wrong and how to bring you on track so i am not advocating that you should join coaching institutes i am not advocating any coaching institutes but it they act as a catalyst uh, when you are on your path to become a ca engineer so that's it for all the eight points i hope you have understood the all the eight points and we will uh, if you have any questions in your mind and you want to ask then we will reserve some slot like 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the session where you can ask those doubts so right now just note them down i can see some hands raised but uh, we can take them at the end also okay so let's i hope you have understood all the points that i have mentioned if you have understood then you can comment uh, yes in the comment box or why you can simply put why in the comment box chat box Why do you start putting why if you understood the the steps? Or do you want me to repeat any point? Yeah, so that I will know. Definitely. Looks like now it's going very well. Everyone is saying yes and why. But still, I'm waiting only five to six. Why? Why not? Everyone is participating. Participate, guys. This it doesn't take very much time to say why. Yeah, out of out of twenty people, there are only five yes. okay so <clears throat> till here i am i am hoping it is clear to everyone now we will move to my our next phase that is common misconceptions about ca so uh, people generally uh, when they are not aware about the field about ca they usually hear things from others and when they hear anything they directly believe it like say if your neighbor said you need to do a lot of mathematics otherwise you cannot be good at ca or someone says you need to learn a software uh, you need to have software proficiency if you have that you will you are a ca engineer so let me bust or debunk some common misconceptions about ca that people have the first is computers do everything so this is not the case uh, computers are like calculators to solve all the complex stuff or complex equation in the background ca requires a human brain to solve problems and by human brain i mean uh, he requires all the basic knowledge fundamentals in step 1 that i mentioned he should have engineering judgment and he should have decision making ability so co by combining all these skills he can solve he can be a good problem solver and computer is just a part of it it is just a tool for ca engineers to uh, like accelerate their process of problem solving so the next misconception is learn software and become a ca engineer so as i said uh, choosing a domain and uh, having proficiency in the fundamentals these are the basic prerequisites before learning any software uh, and i hope you have already understood it why choosing a domain is important learning a software will only make you a tool operator as my mentors i have got good in good mentors so i learned this very early on that choosing a, why choosing a domain is important and software is just a tool it's not like you press some buttons here and there the computer does everything and you directly get the output this is not the case the third misconception is ca and simulation are the same thing so again <clears throat> i would say uh, simulation is like visual representation or you can say visualization of the results or the animation it is just a small part of the whole process the whole process of ca uh, revolves around pre processing analysis post processing and again report preparation so simulation is a part of post processing we can say where you get to see the results where you get to see how the component will behave under some set of applied load conditions uh, you uh, if the you can judge if the deformations are going right as you expected or if the component is behaving as you expected as per the boundary conditions so many people what they they come across posts on linkedin where they see colorful animations of a car getting crashed on a wall or uh, aerodynamics of a car or aeroplane something stuff like that they come across and they directly judge and decide yes yes this is ca this is simulation and i want to make a career in that so before <clears throat> making any snap judgments i will i would suggest first understand the whole process of ca then the fourth misconception that people have is you need to have a masters degree i have come across this misconceptions a lot of times in my career so far so
so let me clarify if you are having a master's degree then it is a plus point i am not denying that you shouldn't have a master's degree but if you are having it then it is good because some companies some oems even prefer such candidates with who have a degree of mtech because what their perception is if uh, this guy is having mtech he must be specialized in some particular domain and he if he is a specialized person we can hire him to help us solve our problems in that domain or debug some models or come across any new challenges because he is an expert so that that is also correct because such companies they require quality of that type but it is not a necessity it is not necessary to do mtech in order to start a career in ca i am also i also didn't do mtech even my a lot of my friends they are not mtech and they are right now working in oems and tier 1 companies mncs in pune so it is not a necessity need to understand this and the fifth piece conception is you need to know a lot of mathematics so now let me clarify this doubt uh, with an analogy or with an example of a car and a driver so imagine you are a driver you want to drive a car from point a to b so in order to drive say 10 kilometers from a to b do you need to know how the engine is built or how the power train system of the car interacts with the engine system of course not you are a driver your job is to drive from point a to b all you need to know are the traffic rules so uh, the mechanic uh, should know how the engine is built or how the power train inter- how various parts interact with the engine because if anything happens to the car he will be repairing it or he will be in a uh, maintenance person who will be operating that so similarly the driver in this case doesn't need to know how the engine works even the mechanic doesn't need to know how to drive a car or he doesn't need need to be a driver in this case so similarly now apply this analogy to ca imagine a car as a ca the driver as a ca analyst or a ca engineer and the mechanic as a software developer so as ca engineers we are the end users that is we are using ca to design something to de- actually design some stuff whereas those who are mechanic or those who are software developer they require knowledge of mathematics that like partial differential equations matrices and uh, numerical methods because they will be making that ca software they will be working on that software they will be working on uh, making that software better or fast or improving that interface so that is also a good career option i am not this i don't disagree with that it is also a good career option and there are lot of companies out there like altair or ancis where they hire such engineers who know coding as well as uh, uh, this mathematics so they will hire such people and but as a ca engineer or as a driver you need to, you are an end user you need to use uh, engineering knowledge to solve problems so you don't in this case you don't need to know all the stuff just as a driver doesn't need to know how the engine works you don't need to know how the software works in the background because it is a job of a software developer not yours all you need to know is basic engineering concepts so i hope these misconceptions all these misconceptions are cleared now uh, you have got some clarity and we are at the end of this presentation so now we are able we will be able to take any questions from the audience or if you have any more doubts you can ask me or if i couldn't answer them i will definitely uh, means get in touch help you get in touch with the required person because say for example you are asking me a doubt about cfd i am not familiar with cfd but i can make you get in touch with person who is working who is proficient in cfd so yes we are ready to take the questions and let me tell you before that uh, the company where i am working in that is rio mode we are service provider and we mostly provide services in automotive domain so if you are a fresher or you are a graduate or you are in final year of engineering and if you are university or college if they are interested in ca awareness programs to conduct in your college or any trainings that need to be done to bridge the gap between academia and uh, industry so i would suggest you you can get in touch with Uh, people at rio mold you can ask your tpo or concerned person to get in touch with me or any person in our company so that we can arrange such a session so that's it so yes sandeep over to you yeah 
Uh, yeah, no, that's, that, that was a great presentation, Abhinav, and I think all the things that I was about to ask in this uh, session, you covered it all. Uh, the okay. misconceptions, the steps, and uh, the fundamentals specifically. I'm very much fan of fundamentals, and people should be familiar with fundamentals. Because, uh, yes, yes, uh, Arjit, we are coming to the questions. Just give me one minute. CAE and CFT difference. That's good. So, what generally happens, uh, Abhinav, is that uh, fundamentals people forget at the college level and then when they prepare for it they just repeat that and again when they get into the jobs they again repeat that so you know yeah. uh, grasping the uh, going into deep and grasping the fundamentals is a very important thing like i told you about my system thing so that is the uh, problem that's uh, currently going on and very much because you can't take risk in the when, when it comes to the industry. You know, it, a lot of money has been invested in that company. Yes, you right. can't have people who are not very good in fundamentals, right? Yes. So that's why people should be very much good in fundamentals at least in the first page. And uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit in very short about uh, my physics cafe before we get to the questions? Uh, how you started this uh, journey of my physics cafe? What you are doing with it? And uh, you are doing good on LinkedIn. On that, uh, uh, yes, thanks for the compliments, Sandeep. I would uh, briefly introduce My Physics Cafe is a platform through which I am providing uh, like technical blocks. Through technical blocks, I am able to explain all the uh, physics concepts or fundamentals of physics through blocks, which are uh, basically stories or case studies from real world. So, uh, my intention wasn't really to start a, any website initially. I enjoyed writing and uh, so I started it step by step to write some blogs and even my previous company they required some technical content to showcase on their company page. So I took that opportunity and started writing. Then I understood that I am if I'm good at writing I should start something of my own so that it will be the, uh, the brand can resonate with budding mechanical engineers who require uh, who need to use uh, basic concept of physics in CA. So in that direction, I started going and in recently, very recently, I have even started a blog series called CAE Compass. I had posted about it on LinkedIn. It is like, uh, it can help you, these blogs can help you uh, to navigate the world of CAE because in CAE there are lots of concepts and it is hard to link each and everything with uh, every other aspect. So these blogs will help you do that. These blogs will simplify your understanding of the CAE field. And uh, <clears throat> these blogs are uh, based on experiences, not they are not just written by researching some article on internet or by referring some books. Th this is not a book knowledge, really it is experiential true. knowledge. Obviously, and that's very much required actually. You know, in science yeah. of the industry is very much required. We are also very much, uh, very soon starting a whole campaign on industry insights. We will be talking to the industry professionals and getting to know the people. You know, there is a large gap of exposure between the students or the early stage professionals uh, because middle level professionals get an idea very well but the research graduates the college students you know they don't have the idea of what's going on in industry that's why they left behind you know what's happening in industry is very much different from what they are expecting that this will be happening right so yes we are going to be in this session and yes uh, uh, very much questions are coming okay so yeah you can start i mean uh, answering i think you will have a lot of questions today uh, yes, that would be good because interaction is always good. Uh, yeah. First question I can see here, can you tell the difference between CAE and CFD? So, uh, actually, CAE is the main parent field. It is not like CAE and CFD are two different fields. Under CAE, there are various other fields like FEA, CFD, MBD, durability and optimization. So, CFD is a branch of CAE because both work on numerical methods. You can say what is the, reframe the question as what is the difference between FEA and CFD. FEA generally belongs to structural mechanics problems like structural analysis of components, say crash analysis or uh, even uh, linear static analysis or load application analysis of material handling equipment, something like that. And uh, while CFD deals with all like fluid mechanics, fluid dynamics, even some thermal problems come under CFD. So this should answer your should clarify your doubt i would guess so next question is how can someone transition from design engineering with the one year experience to ca or simulation engineering or cfd engineering okay so the basic framework that i mentioned earlier that is uh, first of all follow those eight steps 
while following those steps uh, think about how you can follow that framework which i had shared earlier that is uh, first key for service providing industries and you can uh, look for any opportunities for who, which are for freshers it is not like that freshers are not allowed in service industries actually lot of service industries today are looking for freshers because they require that talent they require fresh talent <coughs> to help them so uh, make a list of service companies as i said earlier and start approaching those companies if they have relevant openings for freshers even if you are a design engineer you can it doesn't matter it, it doesn't mean that you cannot make a career or make a transition from design to ca you can always do that so basic of uh, is the, that only that you should come in contact start coming in contact uh, in order to increase your opportunities so these strategies that i have shared earlier they will uh, help you to do that exactly that so uh, the next question i see is I'm working in home appliances domain in drop impact analysis. Can you suggest me how I can switch to automotive domain in crash? So let me tell you, if you are not aware that all these crash analysis, drop analysis, impact analysis, or shock analysis, all these types come under nonlinear dynamic analysis. So you are already working in nonlinear dynamic analysis. All you have to do is you have to perform a crash test. So you can practice, you can refer, there is a one website called dynamo.com where they have provided the case studies and even uh, what all the cards you require to give what all the boundary conditions you require to give they will provide you there will be a model downloadable downloadable model available in that website or dynasupport.com that is also a good website you can download that ready-made model uh, use that model as a reference and replicate it in your own model uh, say you got a model of some ford car you can replicate that model to toyota car and apply those same boundary conditions and practice it uh, like that given in the case study so you can do a crash and once you are confident that you can do a crash analysis from scratch that is from start to end everything like pre-processing uh, analysis post-processing once you are confident you can add that as a project in your portfolio and while applying you can share that portfolio with recruiters or industry personnel uh, can you name a few companies where a fresher to CAE field can start? So as I said earlier, service providing service providers are low hanging fruits for graduates or who are starting as a new people in CAE. So target those service industries. Uh, tier one also you can target, but there are very less chances because as I mentioned earlier already, what they prefer. So. Uh, please conduct more session like this. It will be useful. Yes, definitely, Tanuj. Uh, can CA engineer can do the freelancing? Uh, I am not aware about this much, but uh, he can do freelancing. But what company sees when they give any project to freelancers, they will look for if that freelancer is having license of that software. If it is a crack version, they will not trust you and you will not get the projects as a freelancer. So that what I know I told you right apart from that uh, it's little bit difficult but if you have expertise and license it will be easier and if you have some reputation in the industrial market industrial domain say you have some five to eight years experience you have a lot of people in your contacts who can uh, give you some flow of projects and you have a license and you have expertise then yes you can do freelancing can you please share few sources where can we learn different softwares like ls diana abacus ansys etc so uh, abacus and ansys they are possible to learn from their websites alone they have provided lots of material on that their website but in case you are still not it's still not enough for you to learn or it's not making any you feel that it's not making any sales sense you can go to platforms like youtube there are a lot of channels uh, available where they teach CA from st uh, scratch and uh, I have prepared I have made a separate post or separate article on that in CA compass where I have uh, given 12 free resources for CA engineers and in those free resources I have mentioned those YouTube channels which you can follow I will share that link afterwards in that whatsapp group uh, so that you can uh, start reading and start uh, referring them right away and apart from that that if you uh, want to still 
gain some expertise in LS Dyna or CI backers. Then only option is either you can join a coaching institute who provides us trainings or you can learn it from senior person in your company. Otherwise, uh, it's not possible to learn on your own. So either you get in touch with senior professionals who can teach you that kind of stuff, who, can, who are willing to spend their efforts, spend their time to make you understand each and everything in that software. So that's it. Uh, can you please keep website links now? You just shared where we can see FEA blogs. Uh, you can do one thing. You can visit myphysicscafe.com if you are <coughs> eager to go there. Go to myphysicscafe.com. There you will see lots of categories. In that category, you need to go to resources. And when you go to resources, the first block that will come up is 12 free resources for CAE engineers. So I hope that helps. Uh, what is the range of salary that CE analysts can earn at entry level, mid level and senior level? What are some highest packages in this field? So I'm glad you asked this question. I was waiting for this question since long time. Before COVID, uh, the situation was not so good for CAE engineers. The packages were very much low, but after post COVID, the market began to boom. Even, even now also CAE, <coughs> there are lots of openings in CAE and uh, you can see a lots of openings even on linkedin so they are even offering higher packages they are trying to replicate the it culture because what's happening is lots of people are migrating from ca to it because of good culture uh, good facilities or good packages but now uh, ca industry professionals started to know that this thing is happening so we also need to upgrade ourselves we also need to treat employees well so now they are also providing good packages so i have already noted down these points for freshers uh, the companies offer packages like three to five lakhs per annum it can go to six lakhs per annum also for freshers i'm saying who are directly joining tier one companies or even service providers and i have gathered this data from lots of by uh, getting in touch with lots of my friends even in my company also i see lots of examples and this package thing actually also depends of various factors like what is your educational qualification uh, how expert are you using in particular software if you are a fresher and you are already uh, familiar with solvers like optistruct or ls Dyna, then it will be only a plus point for you you will get a, you can negotiate for a higher salary so it depends on such factors what all knowledge you already have how good are you with the basics how is your problem solving skill uh, what all additional certifications you are having? Can you handle pressure? And how you handle parallel projects? How you handle complex projects? How you interact with the customer? If you are having good communication skills, if you have all of this, you can always ask for higher package and you will always get it. The range is 3 to 5 LPA. 3 to 5 lakh per annum or even 6 lakh per annum. For 2 to 3 years experience person, the package range is 5 to 7 LPA or lakhs per annum, 5 to 7. For 4 to 8 years of experience, it is 8 to 12 LPA. And for 10 plus years experience, uh, you might have noticed what I said just now. As the experience goes on increasing, the package goes on multiplying. So for 10 plus experience, it will be 12 to 15 lakhs per annum. And as I said, it depends on a lot of factors. One of my friend who works in an uh, MNC in Pune, that <coughs> company uh, initially was offering less packages, but post COVID, they are offering GET. Uh, those who are joining as a GET, they are uh, offering the, those GET 5 lakh per annum right now. So it de also depends, varies from company to company, how that company, what, who are their clients or uh, their uh, brand reputation in the market. Okay. So Sir, also does learning to write subroutines in MCs or Abacus help someone stand out when he's trying to shift his domain from design to CA? So, Rachit, can you uh, please simplify what do you mean by subroutines? Because I'm not familiar with this term in MCs or Abacus. Uh, basically, I work in LS Dyna and Hypermesh for automotive domain. Abacus, I have used for some small or uh, beginner level projects only i'm not familiar much familiar with abacus so if you could please simplify that what do you mean by subroutines in abacus or ncs then it will be helpful for me to answer that question 
otherwise you may if you feel awkward you can get in touch with me later uh, we can discuss this in person as well but uh, if i am not familiar with abacus or ansys i will uh, help you get in touch with that required person so i may uh, he may be able to guide you better uh, which skills are needed for a fresher which skills are needed for a fresher so if you have gone through this presentation that i shared if you uh, listened it attentively i have already mentioned those skills if i repeat again it will consume a lot of time so again uh, if you have missed those points i would suggest again you go to myphysicscafe.com there is one blog article on career roadmap for ca in that blog article i have mentioned these points so you can read those you so that you can get an idea and even if you have missed this i think sandeep will be recording this session and it will be aired on youtube uh, some yes. few days so you can watch it again not, not an issue okay now okay thank you guys thank you very much and uh, i want uh, that everyone who it's possible everyone can open their video so that we can take a group picture and uh, uh, celebrate the success of this whole session this whole session was too much engaging and productive and i think it must have helped you a lot uh, in deciding for your careers and everything for various of the questions that you asked i mean now your engineers building a professional network for engineers and engineers from each and every background. So anything related to whether it's CAE, CFD, simulations, whatever software you have mentioned, whether it's LS Diana or CFD, then it can access fluent, it can be star CCM, or any open form uh, for the thermal simulations, for structural simulations, for each and every level of engineering, each and every discipline of engineering, we are developing the whole professional network. And okay. that professional network will be helping every student or every professional that's why i uh, generally uh, started a poll also that how many of you are entry level or senior professional or mid professionals because the whole ecosystem of engineering must be organized at one place it's not like that suppose the, the problem of ca or the problem of cfd or the problem of like uh, uh, design or simulation each and every industry is so much disorganized i mean one industry doesn't know about another industry so in the whole of the ecosystem of each and every discipline, each and every software, each and every technology, each and every industry will be collaborating in the same thing. So that's why we are having this career fusion event also, where we were doing a lot of things related to career, where various uh, employers participated to give the jobs and uh, premier issues like IIT Hyderabad, IIT Roorkee collaborated with us and uh, their students also got the jobs and internships with this career fusion. And I hope many of you, if you have joined this thing, then definitely you will be getting certainly most of one of you more who gives spreading of answers to see possible. Uh, guys, we will be talking in the group. Okay. The group is group will be open for all. And uh, very soon we will be going to your region communities also, where we will be making communities for everything that I mentioned. So that stay in touch with your engineer. I think Sanjeev might be uh, sending you the links of the social media and your engineer so that you can sign up for that. And uh, very few, very sessions are coming on. Like from, uh, I can, I, uh, I'm just saying this. Uh, Professor Mayesh Srivastava from ISC uh, is also going to join. Various professor from ISC, IIT, and uh, from Harvard, from Stanford, from Harvard Innovation Labs, various innovation labs, various industries and top institutions will be joining for R and D's, right? So to discuss on R and D's, to discuss on various industry level topics, we will be inviting various people, right? So don't worry about anything. Every knowledge will be provided on your engineer. And Aminath is a uh, writer at your engineer. He's a creator. He creates various blogs on your engineer. He has created uh, three to five blogs, I think. And he is a regular uh, contributor at your engineer. Right? You will have uh -huh. more sessions with Aminath also, so that you can gain insights. This session was more and more focused on the career side, I think. Uh, Aminath, let's do some day software side. And then, you know, uh, various other uh, levels where we can be connecting that particular audience. Right? Yes, yes, sure. And I would like to also thank you for providing me this opportunity to speak on this platform with uh, so many like minded people. Actually, it was my first time time to speak in such an online event. So now after mm -hmm. this, I, uh, I, I know how it works. So now I, I can conduct, conduct my own online virtual events. So I that think, gave I me think, this confidence. I think, I, think and, you were, uh, I think you were very great. And uh, everyone engaged very well. You answered all of the questions very patiently. 
So it was very great to have such a meeting. Guys, uh, I'm uh, asking again to open up your videos so that we can take a group picture. Is it possible? I think it's possible. It will be very good. This video will also yes. be going on YouTube uh, tomorrow. It doesn't matter how you look or don't worry about how yeah, you look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone likes to sitting on, doesn't matter. on the bread. Yes, exactly. Right? Can we open the picture? I think people yeah. are... Uh, even I would like to share, share that this is a very good initiative you are doing that career fusion event so that people who are not aware about industrial practices they are getting to know what actually is working in the industry so yes. this is a great initiative thank and you thank you thank you very much I'm grateful for being a part of this thank you very much very soon we will be running various campaigns on industry in science for the startup campaigns you know technologies everything related to engineering will be discussed at your engineering Right, so stay in touch with your engineer. I think very, very uh, few cases are there. Uh, can we open the camera just for uh, two to three seconds? We will grab the picture and then you can turn off the camera. Thank you very much. Can we open it for two to three seconds only? I think everyone is opening. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry about this thing. It's a very collaborative meeting. And I think uh, various people like Rakshit has asked a lot of questions, and those have asked a lot of questions. Tanuj was also asking, yes, various people were asking. Wait, wait. Okay, so I'm taking a picture. Uh, let's take one more. If, if you guys can open up the cameras. Okay. Okay, let's go. Thank you very much, Abhinav. And uh, thank you very much, guys, for joining this session. Okay, stay in touch in the WhatsApp group also with your engineer also and follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram. Definitely follow us on LinkedIn if you are on LinkedIn because we do post a lot of things on LinkedIn and a lot of blogs on LinkedIn so that uh, people get to know about each and every aspect of engineering. And one thing uh, I can understand, uh, I will know that that IT shift that you are mentioning, yes, that's happening. Various people are getting good jobs in IT. That's why the core engineers from mechanical, civil, electrical, electronics, they are shifting towards IT. And that's why the industry, heavy industries or core industries, infra industry, they are paying high salaries now. And they will be paying high salaries, right? Because they have to also sustain. If they will sustain, that's why they will sustain, right? Everyone is that's in the right. ecosystem. It's not like uh, someone is dependent. It's interdependency. Right? And yes, unless people understand that product development is also a very interesting field, yes. they will once they understand this they and all the inside out things they will uh, start believing and uh, they will start taking interest in this exactly. because mechanical engineering people like leonardo da vinci those <laughs> were mechanical engineers yes, so yes, yes. you can just uh, get an idea how great this field is mechanical engineering. exactly exactly just go into the deep right thank you very much Amna. thank you very much everyone you guys were with a great audience today and it was a very insightful and engaging session. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for making this session great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. That was great. That was great. Thank you for the cheers.